It's a great place to be in the Fraser range. All the drilling and work we've done today suggests that we have a good chance of discovering mineralization, and that's what we're trying to do. Well, hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by the Chairman and Managing Director of Galileo Mining, Brad Underwood. Uh, Brad, great to see you today. Um, I'd like to start off, um, Galileo, uh, obviously you're exploring four uh, nickel and copper bearing massive sulphides in the Fraser Range uh, region of Western Australia. Can you start things off by telling us a, a little bit about um, your, your tenements um, in the region, um, where they sit uh, in, in comparison to the other discoveries in, in, that, in that area? Absolutely, and it's great to be here, Leo. Uh, so as you mentioned, we have an active exploration program in the Fraser Range. It's a joint venture with the Creasy Group. Uh, the Creasy Group is owned by Mark Creasy, who is a well-known West Australian mining entrepreneur. And he has been mostly responsible for the development of the Fraser Range as a mineral province. So he has been there over the past 20 years exploring and was the major shareholder of Sirius Resources when they made a breakthrough discovery in 2012. So that uh, discovery in 2012 then went on to become the Nova Mine now owned by IGO. It's a 14 million tonne resource. Our tenements sit uh, 30 kilometres away from that mine site to the southwest. And then also we have a second area, which we're working around 80 kilometres to the northeast. Uh, further to that, in 2015, there was another discovery called the Silver Knight deposit. And that is, in fact, closer to our tenements in the northern area. Uh, so that is a, a smaller resource. Uh, the publicly disclosed resource is around four to five million tonnes, and that's 100% owned by the private company, the Creasy Group. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than that, in the Fraser Range, there's been Legend Mining's Mawson uh, discovery, which is a significant amount of massive sulphide mineralization, and they're drilling that actively at the moment. Uh, that sits around 50 kilometres away from us. So we're surrounded by some, uh, or some very, uh, good mines and some excellent prospects as well. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great place to be in the Fraser Range. All the drilling and work we've done today suggests that we have a good chance of discovering mineralization, and that's what we're trying to do. Absolutely. Um, uh, Legend Mining also uh, has, I, I believe, uh, Mark Creasy as an, in, as an investor. And, and, and to go into sort of your background, um, you were previously with um, uh, the Creasy Group working on the Silver Knight uh, project. Is that correct? That's right. So I worked uh, for the Creasy Group between uh, 2010 and 2018. So I spent eight years there and a lot of that time was in the Fraser Range. In 2015, we discovered the Silver Knight deposit, uh, completed the initial drilling there, and then that's gone on to become a uh, resource level deposit. Hmm. You're right. Legend Mining is a, major is a major shareholder is Mark Creasy. And uh, to date, there have been no discoveries in the Fraser range that haven't involved the Creasy Group. Mm, absolutely. Um, and I understand you're, 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 you're currently uh, drilling uh, in various uh, locations uh, across your tenements. And Lantern South, um, you're about to, about to commence drilling, I understand. Uh, tell us what's been found so far at Lantern South and what are you planning to do over the next uh, few weeks? At Lands and South, we have already intersected disseminated uh, nickel copper sulfide mineralization. Uh, and at the moment, we are drilling beneath one of those early stage drill holes we put in last year. The grades we're talking about are around 0.2% uh, nickel, 0.15% copper. So not quite economic at this stage. Uh, the widths are quite significant. That's over a 40 meter width. We're drilling beneath that initial intersection trying to determine whether there is a greater amount of mineralization at higher grade in that area. It looks very prospective from the initial drilling and we just need to complete the work uh, to find out what's actually there. Mm. And when do you actually ex expect to have that drill bit turning? It's turning at the moment. So we've right. started drilling that hole, uh, the diamond drilling. So it uh, typically gets 30 to 40 meters per shift. Uh, we should be finished that within a week and we'd hope to update the markets uh, shortly after on the results of that drill hole. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have your, your Delta Blues uh, prospect. That's down in, in the south, closer to the uh, Sirius uh, Nova uh, project. Um, tell us a little bit about what you've got down there and, and what your plans are. Well, we're a typical exploration company where we build up a pipeline of prospects 
and then uh, drill them. And those that show promise uh, attract further drilling and funding. So Delta Blues we've been working on since 2019. We've already done the initial air core drilling, which is a shallow drilling technique, looking at the top of the rocks to determine what we have in that area. Uh, so this area is undercover, up to 30 meters of sandstone on top. So we're never quite sure what sort of rocks we're dealing with until we do that initial drilling. That's been completed. We've gone back and recently completed EM surveys. So that's also looking undercover. Uh, trying to find the best locations for massive sulfide mineralization. We've identified three conductors, and that area is starting to look very promising, not just on our own work, but on our neighbors' work as well. So there are uh, uh, neighboring companies that have been working in that area. Looks like there's a cluster of intrusions, and uh, we're hoping that one of those, and in particular the one on our ground, uh, will have some mineralization. So we anticipate drill testing those uh, perhaps towards the end of April, uh, if not early May. Mm. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, you know, the, the Delta Blues prospects you're saying is undercover. You can't really tell what's down there until you actually uh, put a put a drill uh, drill hole down there. Um, in terms of sort of prospecting in this area, when you're talking to investors, you must have to remind them a lot that it's, there's a lot of patience involved uh, and, and persistence with this with this game. Yes, that's right. So it's taken us, uh, we've been listed two and a half years and we've been exploring in the Fraser range on our tenements for two years. And uh, remember that I've been exploring in the Fraser range for over 10 years. So it's taken a lot of uh, time and patience to build up our company and corporate knowledge to this point and then apply it to the ground that we have. Uh, luckily, we are now at the point where we can go and do those deeper drill tests to see if we can make a discovery. Uh, so it is definitely requires a lot of patience for this type of exploration. We're at the more interesting end for those investors who like to see the drill results, but we've been working on this for some time. Mm, absolutely. And in terms of sort of funding uh, you, all of this exploration, uh, your cash position, how's that, how's that looking? It's good at the moment. So we have 6.9 million in cash as at the end of the last quarter, and we typically spend uh, just under a million dollars per quarter. So we're fully funded for the exploration programs we have coming up. And uh, what we're aiming to do is to make a discovery and then move on from there. Mm. Um, but, the, you know, the Fraser Range is a relatively a relative newcomer to the, to the world, the global world of, of nickel. Um, in terms of sort of other mineral belts around the world, are there any sort of comparisons that, 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 that you like to draw on? The best analogy would be the Thompson Nickel Belt in Canada. Uh, the geology is similar, it's not identical, but the scale of the belts is remarkably similar. So the Thompson Nickel Belt is over 100 kilometers in strike length, similar with the Fraser Range. The Thompson Nickel Belt, however, has 140 million tons of known resources. Uh, to date in the Fraser Range, we're sitting at less than 20. And the big difference is simply the time and effort that's gone on uh, between those two belts. The Fraser Range is very much a juvenile, underexplored province. We are working on it right now, as are a number of other companies, uh, trying to make those discoveries, which we believe uh, should be there. Mm, absolutely. Um, and I mean, final question for you. Uh, you know, this this may be a difficult one, but but what do you think it is about sort of creasy backed companies that that make them successful in this region? Why is it that only creasy related companies have made discoveries so far? Well, we spoke about patience before, and Mark uh, Creasy first peg tenements in the Fraser Range in the mid-1990s. The breakthrough discovery happened in 2012, uh, over 15 years later. So he is a, a, an explorationist that knows what is required to make discoveries. And a lot of it is patience, uh, running exploration programs, building up the knowledge of the ground, drill testing the targets. If they aren't successful, then you go on to the next one. But what you take away from those uh, drill targets which are unsuccessful in terms of the knowledge build actually helps with the next time you go out there. So over 15 years from when he first started in the Fraser Range to when that discovery was made, there's a huge amount of knowledge that has been built up. And I think we'll enter a critical period in the Fraser Range development where there will be a number of discoveries uh, in relatively quick succession because all of that groundwork has now been done over the past 20 years. Uh, that's probably the short answer as to why 
uh, the creasy backed land position in the Fraser Range is the most respected. Mm, and in, indeed, and, and in terms of nickel sulfides, um, the market obviously sort of looking quite interesting for, 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 for that at the moment. Nickel sulfide is always a good product to discover, uh, particularly in Western Australia, where we have a very stable jurisdiction and uh, a lot of expertise in nickel mining and processing. Uh, it's a great uh, discovery to be made uh, almost at any point in the commodity cycle. So even at the lower points in the commodity cycle, a good nickel sulfide mine can still make money. So they're always worth discovering if a discovery can be made. Mm. But at the moment, I guess, with the, with the additional potential of, of, of batteries, uh, EVs, uh, and, and the nickel, that, the high quality nickel that we, would be required for those. Absolutely. So the um, expected increase in demand from those areas is going to play a role in the uh, future demand for nickel. Great. Well, um, you know, best of luck with your with your exploration efforts. Um, we look forward to uh, seeing seeing how your results come out, and uh, you know, look hope for for that for that big discovery somewhere somewhere down the track once you've uh, honed in on those targets. But uh, thank you very much, uh, Brad, for joining us today. Thanks very much, Leo.